<laughs> it's overflowing. Okay, dude. How am I supposed to put cream in this? <laughs> uh, I hate coffee without cream. <laughs> it tastes so bad. <laughs> mm. There's too many bubbles. It looks like I'm not wearing pants, but I think I am. I think. I woke up this morning, made coffee, did a whole bunch of stuff, and then my coffee got cold, so naturally, it's iced coffee now. That's just the natural progression of coffee. It gets grosser and grosser, and then it turns into iced coffee. Amen. So it's been a while since I've done an arty. For those of you guys who don't know what an arty is, it's where I hunker down and make art while I'm drinking tea. In this case, I'm drinking coffee, but we've gone over this debate before. What is tea? It's like water and something that is put in it. Coffee is a tea. I stand by my statement. Don't debate me. Today I'm going to be working on a drawing that I started in the airport the other day. I don't know, I was just doodling. I was just bored. It's something that I've named analysis of the outfit. I'll put a better picture right here. But right now, like, I barely have kneecaps and my feet are just fins. I wore this really cute outfit the other day and I really liked it. And I kind of want to make this because I'm thinking about using that exact outfit for something that's very secret that I'm not going to talk about. But before we get into the drawing and the arting, I'm I'm very pleased to announce that this video is sponsored by Fossil. Fossil was kind enough to send me some goodies that I've been really loving lately. They're bringing back their really distinct Americana retro feel, which I love because I love anything with the slightest tinge of nostalgia. They got me this new watch. It is the smartwatch and it's beautiful, but not only beautiful, it's actually really nifty. It connects to your smartphone and you can do tons of things on it, like check your notifications, track your steps, and my favorite thing, which is control your music. So if I press this button, I can stop, start, or skip a song, and I can also control the volume of the music all on my watch, which is so cool. <laughs> and I really like that it doesn't look like a smart watch. Like, it looks like a completely classic watch, but it has all these really amazing features. There's also tons of different straps and watch face options, and it's just a really awesome modern take on the classic watch. They also sent over this really cute backpack. It has tons of pockets, and it's perfect for the back to school season. Dark blue is my favorite color in the whole wide world. Side note. There's all these, like, secret pockets that I keep finding in it and it's just really versatile and perfect for traveling also just like extremely well made like this backpack will last me a lifetime big thanks to fossil for supporting my channel and letting me do what i love to do let's get to drawing i have my drawing supplies in here my little tiny sketchbook and also my pencil bag but i'm only using a pencil so i don't even know why i brought the whole entire bag zip, zip. thanks fossil I think I'm gonna use the tray that I use for when I eat dinner. So today I wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind a lot lately and something that's kind of been bothering me and bugging me and concerning me mostly. And it's this idea of perfectionism. that I've been seeing perfectionism really being glorified and made to seem glamorous via social media and a lot of different outlets. I get comments from people every once in a while that just kind of like shake me and make me feel really bad. At first I didn't really take them very seriously, but it started to just get really concerning. They're seemingly sweet, but underlyingly they're really concerning. They're like, you are so perfect and I want to be just like you. Every once in a while when I get comments like that, it's like, oh, that's silly, like, I'm not perfect at all. And they're probably just joking. But then I started getting comments that were like, you are so perfect and I could never be like you. And comments that are like, I hate that my life isn't like yours. And comments that were extremely alarming. Comments that were comparing this idea of me with actual human lives and them feeling like, since they're not reaching this level of perfection, that they should hate themselves. I know that it seems like tooting my own horn, saying like, I always get these comments, you're so perfect. I'm not saying that, I'm trying to make a point right now. Hear me out, I'm not perfect, and I thought that everyone knew that, but I think there is a percentage of people who don't understand that the person that they see on social media is a tenth of my reality. It's this very distorted, beautiful, filtered version of my life. And after I started getting those comments, I started looking back on my videos. And I was watching them and like seeing myself laughing with my friends and like traveling and doing all these things. And I was like, my God, I think I'm accidentally making people think that they should live this completely unattainable lifestyle in order to be happy. I am a perfectionist 
in every single way possible. When I do something, I want to do it right, and it gets me to a point where it drives me crazy. And it's something that I want to change about myself. But with YouTube videos in particular, I'm really proud of what I do. And I find that the final products that I end up putting onto the YouTube channel portray this form of life that isn't real, and I think that it's damaging. I am a perfectionist, so if I see a single flaw in any one of my videos, I cut it out. It's as easy as a few button clicks, and I can just make it seem like I don't stutter and I never say the word um. And all I ever do is run around and laugh with my friends. <laughs> but that's so far from the truth, and I want everyone to know that, yet I work so hard at hiding that that is the truth about me. I think it's good to have role models or people in your life who you see in your life. They seem happy and I want to be happy and they're living a healthy lifestyle so I want to live a healthy lifestyle like them. But I think that it gets unhealthy pretty quickly. I used to follow a lot, a lot of study blur accounts on Instagram and Tumblr and Twitter, but recently I've been unfollowing all of them. <laughs> For those of you guys who don't know, study blur accounts are these accounts that post like stationery and pens and pencils and cute things like that, but they also posts like studying tips and things that help you do well in school and stuff like that. I worked really hard in school so I was like this is amazing. I loved pens and pencils and stuff like that so I followed a whole bunch of them but it very quickly took an extremely unhealthy turn and it's something that I wanted to bring up. These study blur accounts, I'm not saying every study blur account but a lot of study blur accounts, they like to glamorize this lifestyle where all you do is work all the time, you're extremely exhausted, your mental health is plummeting, but your grades are good. It makes it seem like it's like a fun thing to work so hard that you are absolutely miserable and you hate your life. But since everything is perfect and your notes are beautiful and your stationery is pink and blue and your grades are all A's, that you are happy and you are living a successful life. That isn't the truth because being miserable to me doesn't seem very much like success. There's a lot of accounts, you know, that, that aren't like that, but I I just keep seeing these kind of idolizations of the Hermione Granger type of person. Hermione Granger, I love her with all my heart and she is someone that I would love to aspire to be to be able to work that hard. But even in the books you see like she slowly starts to deteriorate with how hard she's working. But people love to idolize that idea of like, I'm going to be so perfect. I'm going to work so hard and I'm going to have no flaws. I don't care if I'm miserable, I just want to be perfect. And I'm afraid that with my YouTube channel I may have accidentally promoted this life where all I ever do is work, 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 and all I ever do is smile and laugh with my friends and speak eloquently, but that's just not the truth, and I'm sorry. I feel bad because I didn't notice that I was doing it until I started getting comments that really brought it to my attention. There's a lot of celebrities and people on social media that I really look up to and really admire, and I notice that when I see them living these perfect lives, there's like part of me that loathes them, and part of me that's just so, so mad that I won't be able to ever have that life. But by running my own channel, I've learned that they're not even living that life. <laughs> it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, and a lot of it isn't true, and I really want to bring that to your attention because I don't want one of you guys to ever come to my channel and feel like you are inadequate. Nowadays, when I look at my channel, especially some of my older videos, I look at myself on screen and it's like, that person doesn't exist in real life. That person is an idea. That person's just like a figment of my imagination. It's this person that I've created who never lets anyone down and, and is always happy and smiling and is great to all his friends and is doing perfectly in school. But that person doesn't exist and I'm not that person at all. On my channel, I always wanted to be happy and I really wanted to show this side of myself that was bright. I didn't want to be the channel on YouTube that you went to in order to be depressed. Uh, I wanted to be happy and I think that's a completely good thing. I think it's always good to have people in your life who, when you see them, they bring a lot of happiness and positivity to you. That's a great thing, but I think it gets bad once you start to try to apply that to your own life because the things that make them happy aren't the same things that are gonna make you happy and their seemingly perfect life isn't perfect. So by trying to attain that seemingly perfect life, you're just gonna end up like them, which is falling behind and never being able to attain this idea of perfection. I'm a perfectionist, I am, but it's something that I wanna change because I know that it's unhealthy to never feel like you're good enough. I think by being a 
perfectionist, you're basically setting yourself up for disaster because you'll never achieve it. So I'm gonna put it on the record. When you watch these videos, I want them to make you happy. I want it to be a breath of fresh air, but I don't want you to want to be me because this, this screen and my vlogs and, and stuff like that, those are the snapshots of my life where I am the happiest, where I am the brightest, where I am on my ups. I never record my lows because I don't want to bring people down. I think forthcoming, I want to kind of show people that I'm not this like perfectly poised human. Some of my older stuff, I watch it and I'm like, who is that person? That person needs to like take a nap or something. I, I just get a little ridiculous, I think. It just gets a little silly. Like, I don't sit with perfect posture. My posture is terrible. And I don't use big words all the time. I'm like constantly cussing and I'm from Texas. So I'm like, hey y'all, let's go eat some. I'm not, I'm not that person. The person that you see on the internet, it's the face that I put forward. When I want to make someone happy because I like to make you guys happy, chasing perfection will always let you down. And that sounds kind of depressing, but it's just the truth. The most you can do is just try to be the best version of yourself, but the best version of yourself isn't going to be someone else's idea of perfection. I hope that I got my point across. I don't really know if I use the right words. I'm going to finish up this drawing and I'll put a finished product here. Wow, wow. So wow. Wow. Beautiful. That. If anyone has anything to chime in on the whole perfectionism aspect of social media, or if anyone has anything to say about healthy role models or the right way to look at social media without it being unhealthy, I'd love to hear it in the comments. I'm just one voice and collective voices are always much more enlightening than hearing one kid sitting in his apartment just blabbing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in a couple days with a brand new video. God bless and goodbye.